A connection between bank profits and the fight against climate change. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive. Progressive Commercial Insurance protects small businesses with customizable coverage options as unique as your business. More at ProgressiveCommercial.com. And by Otter.ai. Otter's AI meeting assistant automatically takes live meeting notes, captures slides, generates summaries, and assigns action items. More at Otter.ai. I'm David Brancaccio in New York. First, we're keeping an eye on First Republic, a medium-sized bank that customers have been leaving, even though deposits are insured up to a quarter million dollars. Earlier this week, the bank posted its quarterly results, which did not improve the bank's standing. Marketplace's Nova Safo has more. First Republic has managed to survive while facing similar problems, which took down Silicon Valley and Signature Banks. In quarterly results earlier this week, the bank said depositors took out $100 billion last month. It was able to pay out those deposits, but at huge cost, taking out expensive loans and getting a $30 billion cash injection from major banks. Were all of those efforts enough, or did they simply delay the inevitable collapse? So far, government regulators have been reluctant to step in. Rescuing First Republic would mean shoveling billions of dollars over to big banks, the ones who put together the cash rescue. That's a tough sell in an environment where even the earlier bank rescues have faced some criticism. Meanwhile, First Republic's executives say the bank will cut costs and sell assets. But who will buy those assets? Things such as mortgage-backed loans made when interest rates were at rock bottom. So far, there's no obvious answer and no obvious path forward for First Republic. I'm Novasafo for Marketplace. First Republic stock is up 4% overnight. Uh, that's up. But lengthen the timeline, and you see a very different story. The stock is down 65% from a high this week and down 96% from a high in February. Dow futures now up 185 points, 6 tenths percent. S&P futures up half a percent. NASDAQ futures are up 7 tenths of a percent. Some of the bounces coming from Facebook Meta, which reported its sales have started growing again. The stock is up 11% pre-market. Now, First Republic is a medium-sized bank, but let's turn to the big banks in the fight against climate change. The big dogs reported banner profits January to March, a period that includes many depositors moving money out of the smaller banks into bigger ones, as I said. Is there a chance these higher profits might encourage banks to make good on climate promises? As two recent studies show, the biggest banks are still not doing enough to meet the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement. Ali Budner reports. Banks themselves don't emit exorbitant amounts of greenhouse gas, but they play a big role in financing industries that do, like fossil fuel companies. And banks are under pressure to set climate goals. A new report from the nonprofit series looks at the largest U.S. banks and how they plan to help reduce emissions from oil and gas by 2030. Co-author Blair Bateson says the biggest banks have work to do. None of the six banks' targets for 2030 put us on the pathway for this global goal that we need to achieve. The goal is preventing more than 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming. Bateson says banks aren't necessarily on the wrong path. Just that they need to go further and faster. Since the Paris Agreement was into effect in 2016, banks have poured $5.5 trillion into fossil fuel companies. Shauna Foster is with the nonprofit Rainforest Action Network, which collaborated on a recent annual study looking at the world's 60 leading banks and their relationships with over 2,000 fossil fuel companies. Banks at first were like, well, we have nothing to do with this. We're just neutral servicers of the economy and, you know, whatever the market wants, that's what we finance. But now she says bank leaders are responding to pressure from shareholders and customers, even if they're slow to make meaningful change. Galena Hale is an economics professor at the University of California, Santa Cruz. She says that for the bigger banks reporting strong profits right now, it might be easier for their boards to approve changes towards more sustainability. But Hale says banks really shouldn't need soaring profits to act on climate goals if they see those actions not as a sacrifice, but rather as a bulwark against future loss. She says if banks overinvest in fossil fuels, then they're going to suffer consequences in terms of profitability later on. Some banks, like Citi, say their 2050 emissions reduction targets for their most carbon-intensive sectors do align with the 1.5-degree climate scenario. Val Smith is Citi's chief sustainability officer. So far, we have developed targets for our energy portfolio, power, 
automotive manufacturing, commercial real estate, steel, and thermal coal mining. Smith says the pressure for that has come from investors, their own employees, and even some fossil fuel companies who want to green their portfolios for their own bottom line. I'm Ali Budner for Marketplace. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by SoFi. SoFi Insights helps members track all of their money all in one place. SoFi Insights provides credit score monitoring, spending breakdowns, financial insights, and more. Learn more at SoFi.com. SOFI.com. Get your money right. And by Amazon Business, helping provide a smarter, easier way to get the supplies businesses need to thrive. Amazon Business, your partner for smart business buying. In the face of international sanctions following its war on Ukraine, Russia got more creative finding buyers for its oil products. This means a lot of it has to travel further to those customers who are ignoring sanctions. Longer hauls mean more demand for tankers, which drives up the price for everyone else. Marketplace's Lily Jamali has that. Demand for tanker services has surged as sanctions have forced Russia to sell a whole lot less oil to Europe and more to other parts of the world, says Nicholas Watt, head of freight pricing at Argus Media. That flow is now largely going to India or to China, so that's a longer haul route that will tie up more tanker tonnage. All that tied up tonnage means it's more expensive for producers around the world to hire tankers that move fuel and petroleum products around the world. The average cost has more than doubled over the last two months. And experts say we can't count on a lot of new tankers to ease the crunch. I'm Lily Dramali for Marketplace. And a move toward unionization at YouTube, where some staffers in Texas have overwhelmingly voted to form a bargaining unit, which would be a first within YouTube's parent company, Alphabet. Managing videos and handling user requests is not entirely automated, and these are some of the humans that do this work. Alphabet is challenging a regional ruling by the National Labor Relations Board that permitted a union, saying this group works for a subcontractor. In New York, I'm David Brancaccio. This is the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.